Welcome to Light Logic, the podcast that discusses everything you need to know about low voltage lighting. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. You're listening to Light Logic. Hi, everyone. Uh, Brian Qualls here uh, with the Light Logic podcast. Uh, today, uh, we had senior design engineer or senior principal design engineer, Hyuk Lee of uh, Unique Lighting Systems uh, on our uh, podcast today. Uh, had a little bit of a chance to, to talk with him and get a little peek behind the curtain of, of what really puts our products together as far as new products and, and um, going through and, and improving our existing products. So uh, it, was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I've known Yuck for, for quite a few years. Him and I have become friends over the years and uh, it, was, uh, it was just a lot of fun to, to sit and interview him. So uh, thanks for tuning in and I uh, hope you enjoy the podcast. Okay, well, let's uh, let's get into it, Yuck. Thank you uh, for joining the Light Logic podcast today. I know I caught you on on uh, uh, short notice, so um, uh, thanks for for making yourself available. Uh, we haven't done one of these in a while, so I uh, just kind of want to jump right into it. So uh, let let our uh, our listeners or downloaders know kind of who you are, uh, what what's your title, and and we'll start with that. Okay, uh, my name is Hyuk Lee, and uh, my title is Senior Principal Design Engineer. Um, it sounds kind of fancy, but it basically means that I do all the engineering for lighting, uh, whether it be fixing issues, designing new products, uh, whatever technical issues that come up. Um, sometimes I delve into other aspects like helping out with inst installation instructions. Um, Fielding some problems in the field, uh, those type, any anything technically related. Perfect, and and that's that's why that was a great idea to have you on because you know me being a a sales guy um, out here and and uh, you know part of the sales team and the marketing team, you know we get all the we get all the credit and and you know you're doing everything behind behind the scenes. It kind of it's funny. I, I tell the story to a lot of people. You know, as a lot of you know, I, I was a I was a landscape architect. And, uh, kind of early in my career, I got to work on a big, big park project in uh, Peoria, Arizona, and I'll never forget the day that uh, the the project got launched, and they were doing the ground or the kind of opening day ceremony with the baseball park. And at the opening day ceremony, it was everyone from the city council and the mayor and the, and the city manager, and everyone was getting all these comeuppance and, and congratulations. And the entire design team was on the sidelines, and we didn't even get a, and a thanks to the design team. It was. You know, we did all the work put together, but they got all the accolades. Sometimes I kind of feel like that's what happens. So all the stuff you're doing behind the scenes. So I kind of wanted to give a peek behind the curtain of of what what does happen. So uh, first off, though, how many how many years have you been with uh, Unique Light? I know you've had an interesting kind of uh, career, Unique Lighting and Toro, and, and kind of talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I came over to Unique Lighting in 2014. So. Wow, it's, it's hard to believe, but it's been seven years. Um, and lighting is actually kind of a, my, my second career. Uh, my initial career in engineering was in on the irrigation side with Toro. Uh, I used to be the valve guy, uh, handled designing valves and, and resolving issues on the uh, assembly line for valves. Uh, in between that engineering stint and my stint in uh, unique lighting. I had a little three-year fling with marketing. I was a product manager uh, on Toro Rescom for a while, for three years. Yeah. yeah, that's interesting. That's one of the things. I mean, you and I. I mean, I've been with the company since 2011. And you and I never really got to to work together. You know, not even as much as we do now over the last you know two years. Um, but that's the one thing that it's been great is, is kind of working with you is that you. You've had your fingers in a lot of different things, so you know you bring a different spin to kind of the engineering side of of the business, and so that's um, that's that's it. So w when you came over to you know Unique Lighting, did you were you excited? Was it reluctancy? Was there? I mean, that's kind of a coming from a valve to to Unique Lighting. That's that's a big big change. Yeah, I mean, I was really uh, excited to try something different uh, and learn about something new. Um, so when you come across a new subject, you tend to view it from your previous background. Um, 
previous uh, perspectives. So I was thinking, well, lighting. Um, so I started thinking back to my undergrad uh, classes that I took in, in uh, electrical engineering and electricity, which regardless, I'm, I'm a mechanical engineer by trade, but you still have to take those classes. So I was thinking, OK, uh, water flowing to pipes. Um, so electricity flows through wires. So you get friction loss in a valve. Uh, you get you know resistance loss. So you know pressure loss. That's like voltage drop. So there's not actually quite a few uh, analogs um, in between the two disciplines. Well, I, and I'm glad you said that because in, in uh, almost all my classes, you know that that I teach either you know online or out in the field, um, I make that correlation between electricity and just you know irrigation systems because majority of our you know customers people that install our products they they know irrigation and and right. even too if you're not an irrigation guy right i mean you've you've turned on a garden hose so you know that you know kind of the characteristics of water through a garden hose if you know that you can figure out how low voltage electricity works so um that's interesting that we've we've all kind of come to that same realization and, and you and i've never really talked about that so um that's uh, that's interesting um so one of the other things too that i i wanted to kind of bring up a little bit is, um, you know, I don't, we can't get too deep into it on this, but you know, we're, we're to get working together on a, on a new product and, and we're getting to go down to the factory, you know, next week to, to do kind of a pilot run of the, of this product. Uh, I've never been, what, what, what can you tell me that, uh, what can I, what can I expect? What can I prepare myself for setting into the, in the factory of how this stuff gets put together? Well, I think the first thing you'll notice is how modern and clean and large the facility is. You know, uh, everyone, anyone who's been to Mexico, you know, is probably on a weekend, uh, have a few beers, you know, might have a, a in, incorrect uh, presumption of what Mexico is like. But when you go over, you'll see a, a, a modern state-of-the-art uh, facility. Getting parts over the border is not a simple thing. Um, all the uh, proper paperwork has to be set up to country of origin because our plant is what they call a maquiladora plant. And getting parts to the plant is not the same thing as uh, importing parts to Mexico. It, it enters kind of temporarily where you use Mexican labor to transform it into a finished good. So it's a totally different category where it's allowed to Across the border, as long as it's part of uh, a bill of material for finished good. Uh, so all the structure has to be in place, um, country of origin, tariff codes, all that has to be set up in order to cross. So we're getting the very last part crossed today. So fingers crossed, everything should be ready by the time we're in the plant next Tuesday. I'm excited. I'm I'm uh, I'm really really looking forward to it. So it'll be uh, it'll be interesting to see. So um, kind of back over to working for unique lighting and, and the low voltage. So you know, like I said, you've been um, kind of on the irrigation side on on the valve side. So what what is it on the the lighting that that really excites you? Something that's really you know kind of holding your interests and. And things that are, are that keep you going throughout the day on on the lighting as as compared to anything else you've ever worked on. Well, I think on the, on the lighting side, there's always something. It's on the cutting edge of technology more so than irrigation. Um, you know, the wireless technology, um, all the color changing technology, new developments in in LED technology every yeah. single day. Um, for that me, seems like that's changing yearly. I mean, it just seems yeah. like it's just better and better every year. You touch almost every every product that we have. Um, where, where do you where do you really like to, to focus your time? Are you uh, a new product guy? Do you like developing new product, or, or or do you like to, you know, work on improving our existing product, or is all of it the uh, you know the the fun side of it? Or well, I mean, th this is gonna sound like a political answer, but actually, uh, there are aspects of uh, both that are that are interesting. You know, when you're working on a new product, you get to be more creative and think of different ideas. Um, but the fact about new product development is that there's lots of lulls in between. You know, there's a lot of waiting around for tooling to be made. Um, you know, when the final product is going to come out, 
in a year or or several months, that reward isn't available until you finally get it done. And there's lots of uh, there's lots of hard slog in between. Versus if you're working on a, a product issue, uh, there's a product failure in the field. It's more of a quick hit. You make you make that fix. You get that sense of accomplishment by fixing a problem right away. So there's there's rewards on both sides. Um, of course, on the new product development, when you see that new thing that you design sitting on uh, distributor shelves or uh, being actually used by customers, that's very rewarding. Sure, sure. So in regards to kind of updating or improving a, a existing product, is that um, is that something that you're constantly looking for? Is it uh, getting information from the field, from our, our sales team and our customers? Is it, is it a combination of of all of that? Uh, you know, how, how are we trying to improve our product? Yeah, I would say most of the reasons for for uh, improving the products come from the field. A customer will identify a shortcoming, uh, or even our salespeople will say, hey, wouldn't it be better if we uh, did it this way? Or there, um, As you know, salespeople, uh, they don't they're not shy people. Uh, <laughs> they let you know when they think something could be better. So th those are the most fertile grounds for uh, uh, improvement ideas. But sometimes we get improvement ideas from uh, our assembly people. They see something that's not so efficient. Um, those things tend to be invisible to the customer. They only improve us internally so that things go together uh, more smoothly at a lower cost. Uh, so that, uh, uh, to give you an example, let's say there's a part that's designed to go in only one way, but if we were to design it so that you could put it in this way and flip it around for the other way and it works the same way, uh, that's better for us. Uh, it's better for assembly people so that they don't have to uh, pay attention to which direction they put it in. To an end customer, eh, it doesn't matter, but to us, it means a lot. Okay, that's, uh, that's yeah, that's interesting. That's a lot of the stuff that we don't uh, we don't see kind of in 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 the background because you're right. You don't think about you know there's somebody somewhere putting these pieces together, and if I've got to be precise and line that up every time, that takes the two seconds or three seconds per fixture, you know, build time. But over how many fixtures we build per year, that that you know adds up, and you know we can improve on those things as well, and and um, go through that. So. Uh, what would you say is the the hardest part of your job? What's the what's the thing that's just difficult that slogs you through? You know, I don't say on a regular basis, but just kind of in general. Um, I would say that there are some aspects of my job where you you find yourself working a lot of hours, but then uh, it's hard to see a tangible progress towards something. You know, I I think you might know the feeling where it's the nature of office work. Uh, where I could design something, get a lot of drawings completed, but then until it's actually realized as a tangible part that goes together into a, a, a working product, uh, that daily, uh, I don't know, that sense of accomplishment, hey, I did this, I did that, um, th that's the hardest part, I think, to just continue to slot through that, and then you get the reward at the end when you see the, the, the working product. Gotcha. Yeah, I would say you you kind of got that point from from what I see. Just you know, again, be on the sales line is is you know uh, you you get fewer calls from from the field when things are working great, and more calls when things are are not so hot. And so having the sales guy on fire because the customer you know customers you know got to get a job done, and you know there's something not working the way that, that we had planned it. Something got funky. Even just you know, not not even so much something wrong with the product itself. Maybe it was something that was a, a issue on on the production line for that batch of fixtures, or you know, that kind of quality control type stuff. And I guess that leads to the question: Are are you involved with that quality control and you know the stuff that uh, goes out in in the field um, as far as checks and balances and things like that? Is that part of your job as well? Yes, I mean, um, pretty much involved in every aspect of the, the production. Uh, including the uh, the quality checks, um, you know, because I know the design probably better than you know the manufacturing engineer. Uh, I kind of know where the pitfalls are and 
where it could fail. So I'll recommend to him, hey, I, I'd like for you to check this aspect when you're putting it together or provide me feedback on, you know, do the parts fit together properly, what to look for, what to test. So, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I'll say this too, kind of building on that a little bit from from my perspective, from you know working with you, you know as close as we have been over the last couple of years, and and being out in the field is, you know, you're not in the field as much as anybody else, right? You're not putting in and working with contractors every day, putting in in fixtures. So, you know, your your knowledge sometimes gets a little bit limited, and and kind of you know advice that I give out to our sales team, our customers that do call in is, is to, you know, maybe take a step back and understand that, that if you're asking, why is it getting installed this, this certain way, isn't you're you're not questioning their, um, their methods. You just, you've never seen it installed that way. So you're yeah, just trying to get it understand. Do I need to make a change in this fixture? Is it, is it now getting installed a certain way that we hadn't accounted for? Do we need to make some updates? So that way it makes it easier for you to install it in, in that in that position. So yeah, so yeah, when I'm asking those questions, I'm just trying to understand. And uh, that is something that I have as a goal to get out to the field more. Um, there's lots of times when you come up with a design that works great on, on the uh, you know meeting room when you're showing it in a clean environment. But once you put it into an environment where there's lots of dirt and water. Things don't uh, work quite right. Uh, parts that assemble smoothly suddenly jam together. They won't come apart. So yeah, it's valuable to be in the field, and I'd like to do more of that in the future. Yeah, well, our, our sales guys are we'll probably once they hear this, will probably start your phone will start uh, um, ringing off the hook. So um, yeah, so that's great. So. Um, with everything that you're going, and I know you're not as involved with marketing and as you used to be, but um, where where do you see the the future of of low voltage lighting? I mean, you kind of touched on it a little bit, but like where do you, where do you see the, just the industry, not so much unique lighting systems, but the industry as a whole? Where do where do you see it, it moving towards? Yeah, it, um, I think technology is moving towards um, more wireless control and integration of lighting into overall home control. So, um, you know, our our existing light logic system, having more products compatible with it, uh, that's gonna help us to uh, lead that charge into um, more of an integrated wireless control system. Yeah, and um, have you heard of anything, and, and I'm getting more and more in this, like I, I, I I don't know. I've had my GoPro for I don't I don't know how long, and just just realized that it has voice control. I mean that I can talk to it to tell it to record and talk to it to tell it to stop. I mean, do you, you see any any direction in, in in voice control over? I mean, right now everyone's got an iPhone app, but is there right. anything in voice that you see potentially? Yeah, I don't think we're that far from uh, having lighting control that way as well. Uh, right now, for example, I have a my garage door opener connected to uh, uh, my Google speaker, and I can speak into my Google uh, speaker and say, hey, Google, close the garage door, and it'll do it. Careful, you're going to close your garage door. <laughs> uh, I know, I know. <laughs> so it, it's not that big of a step to connect um, light logic to that sort of system. Well, and I think we already do, right? It's already, smart logic is already connected to Alexis and, and, and Google speaker. I don't know that that we talk about it as much. You know, I, I'm not sure how uh, how robust it is at this point in time. Yeah, I mean, as you all know, I mean, everyone carries one of these things around all the time, right? Oh, you see my phone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Google Home is connected to, to my phone as well, so it's, oh. it's being activated when I'm talking. But uh, so as, as we're kind of wrapping up here, I got two kind of questions. One of them is, I know that uh again you and i have kind of become friends over the years i know you've got uh uh some personal challenges you always like to like to give yourself and, and uh, wanted to see what if there's one you're working on now and and, and how the one uh, how the unicycle uh, challenge is coming <laughs> <laughs> well you know people picked up a lot of unusual hobbies during the pandemic um because they had a lot more time on their hands at home um 
project? In my case, actually, I, um, you know, how when you're on YouTube, you go from one video to another, and then there was one that came up one time where um, there's a guy who uh, recommended that you pick up a, a skill that is totally unrelated to your profession or your background that will help you to expand as a person. And uh, so he does a series of videos where he's, he's learning something and he's trying to learn them quick. And one of them was riding a unicycle. So I was like, wow, that's, that's kind of a cool idea. So I created a list. Uh, I want to learn to ride a unicycle, learn to juggle. The other one was like, um, there's something called keepy up, keepy, keep uppy or something like that in soccer where you could just kind of juggle the ball up and down on, on your top of your feet. So I created a list. So unicycle was one of the list. And this was before the lockdowns even started. So I bought a unicycle and started learning that. And oh my God, that was so hard. I got metal <laughs> bites on my shins and I, I bought some shin pads. The guy in the video learned to ride a unicycle in like a little less than four hours. It took me three weeks. <laughs> and I'm still doing it because um, I never even got to number two on the list. Uh, I'm still doing it uh, every couple of days. And each time it, I make, I feel just a tad more comfortable and I, I have a little more control. I mean, which is hard to believe. It's been more than a year and a half since I started it. Yet yeah, every day I feel like I'm just a tad better. So yeah, I'm still continuing it. That's great. No, that's, that's, that's inspiring. That's what, you know, always, always trying to challenge, you know, push it on my kid. So. You know, I kind of want to keep doing it myself as well. So thank, thank you for sharing that. I know that's kind of personal, but I do thank you for, for sharing that uh, with, uh, with the podcast here. Uh, so the last thing I, I have, I ask all everyone this at, at, at the close is if you could if you could go back in time and, and tell your younger self uh, one thing, what, what would that be? Um, I would say patience and consistency. Um, Lots of things that are achieved in life don't happen all at once. They're the result of tiny incremental improvements that you make in your life. Um, and I think people are too impatient and give up when uh, things don't happen right away. And lots of times things happen in a zigzag pattern. Sometimes you, you know, you could go down and have a, uh, a bad day, bad, bad week, or even a bad year. But then once you keep bouncing back, you look back, you know, 10 years prior, it's like, wow, I've actually come, you know, quite a far away. So, yeah, yeah. great. Well, thank you. Well, uh, that's going to wrap it up. I, I want to thank you again, Yuck, for your uh, for your time today. This was, uh, this was a lot of fun. I hope you I hope you had fun. And, um, yeah, on. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll see you see you down south next week. Oh, yeah, we'll have a margarita together. <laughs> for sure. Thanks, sir. <laughs> Not in the plan. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Light Logic. We want to hear from you. Would you like to be featured on Light Logic? Email us at infouniquelighting.com. At